Yes, John. Why do you think this issue matters to farmers? I think this, ma this issue matters to all Virginians because it's flat out a property rights issue. And that was one of the original elements of um, the Declaration of In Independence was the pursuit of happiness, was the pursuit of property, and it got later changed. And the key here is that we have an out-of-control board of supervisor who is retroactively laying levies on people for the right use of their property to earn a living and be self-reliant. And for that reason, every Virginian should be concerned about a property rights issue because it goes to the heart of liberty and being self-reliant in America. So you definitely see it spilling out beyond the issue of just a farmer's zoning violation. Oh, absolutely. This is far more than a farmer's zoning uh, violation. This is tied up with the UN Agenda 21, where you have wild, out-of-control environmental groups funding both sides of the political aisle to put through a no-growth, zero-growth agenda and deprive people of their property rights. We just had this battle in Loudoun County over Chesapeake Bay ordinances, and the politicians who advocated for Chesapeake Bay ordinances were swept from office. And we intend to do the same thing in Fauquier County. People earn their livings through their property, through their income, and it's wrong for the government to retroactively tax and fine them. Do you have an opinion as to why this particular Paris farmer was singled out for violations? I, I have no particular opinion on it. I do find it it's interesting that she's a politically active farmer. I find it very interesting that she's been active in what a lot of uh, establishment politicians consider um, campaigns that are not in line with where the establishment wants to go. So I believe she was a Jamie Radke supporter. Um, but we have asked the, the Allen campaign to stand by the farmers, and we have E.W. Jackson coming here, who is representing the Allen campaign. Uh, E.W. was a uh, Senate candidate. He spoke eloquently about farmers' rights, and he'll be here to speak again about farmers' rights and how this connects to the whole movement across the country to return constitutional governments to the citizens of the United States, we the people. Other than working hard to get elected f officials out of office, what can farmers and non-farmers do to prevent further assaults from non-elected officials? Well, when you look at um, how, how our government operates, we, the people, have the power, and we confer that power to our elected representatives. Obviously, not every elected representative is an expert on any particular area of uh, land use and of civic management, sewer systems, for example. Um, but what we can do is we can look at the, the appointed commissions and the appointed positions that our elected officials make these appointments and make sure that the individuals who are made responsible, for example, the zoning commissioner or the zoning um, person, they have to sit there and abide by the same rules and the same um, understanding that government power is limited and when citizens are using their property the way the founders intended, it's not for the Zoning Commission to impose their values because they don't like what's being sold, they don't like how it's being sold, or they don't like the people showing up at the farmer's market. That's ridiculous, it's un-American, and this is playing itself nationally right now with Harry Reid, who's making baseless ac accusations on someone that they are guilty until they're proven innocent. This is exactly the same thing. Out of control government, out of control government representatives, out of control commissions that need to be brought back into control by we the people and we're going to protest when we have to and we're going to vote every time and we're going to remove these people who do not understand the proper bounds of governance until they get the message. And again, uh, we, we observe we have the Allen campaign coming to support us, we have the Lingerfelter campaign coming and this issue is not going to die and end on this particular day. If this board does not reverse this decision, we're going to revisit them. And this board is going to be re revisiting this issue every time they sit there and overstep their bounds for the use of property in Fauquier County, Loudoun County, or any place in Virginia. I've heard Chick-fil-A Day compared to the original Tea Party. Do you think that's a fair analogy? Uh, would you repeat that question? I'm sorry. Chick-fil-A Day compared to the original Tea Party in Boston. Do you think that's a fair analogy in terms of waking up the general populace I think the general populace is very well awake. And if you really look at what happened yesterday with Chick-fil-A Day, um, it's very hard for people to take off on a 2 o'clock on a Thursday afternoon. I'm very fortunate. My employer is very gracious. And my employer is a small business owner. They're fantastic people. They're my friends. They're people I respect. 
and I resent when people sit there and tell me that those people are somehow abusing me or treating me badly. That's not at all the case. Um, the fact that I'm here supporting their rights is a testimony to the goodness of the small business owner. I think also when you look at Chick-fil-A Day, most Chick-fil-A's are franchises. They're everyday people. Um, that particular owner of the Chick-fil-A franchise and empire, for lack of a better word, it's a big corporation, he provides the health and welfare and jobs for tens of thousands of people across the country. And yet he's not allowed to exercise his First Amendment rights. He's not allowed to keep his store closed on a Sunday because that's his religious belief. This is ridiculous. And I think Americans look at that the way they should look at it. An absolute affront to American values, an affront to um, what the Founding Fathers wanted. It's violating the First Amendment rights, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, everything about it. And Americans are rising up against it. And all those people who showed up yesterday to buy food for two hours, they're going to stand in line a long time to vote. And they're going to vote come November 6th. And in states where there's early voting, they're going to vote early. And then what they're going to do is become poll watchers to make sure nobody cheats. And then they're going to get in their cars and go have a Chick-fil-A, aren't they? Absolutely. Chick-fil-A will be, I, I assure you, Chick-fil-A will be served at many a polling place is this coming November. Thank you, John. <laughs>